Hi everyone! Welcome to 3DX and Happy Bladed Halloween! Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little pumpkin cat. Um, it's something I started from a sketch in my brain, which is the sketch on the bottom left. Then I resketched it again on the top. Uh, and what I'm doing right now is just kind of laying out all my shapes. I really like just kind of putting stuff where I kind of imagine it, uh, getting the basic shapes out. And I was having a lot of trouble doing the cat face in Maya, so I came into ZBrush really quick and just sculpted out cat face, brought that into Maya, and then uh, topologized it just to get like the topology that I wanted. I use a lot of quad draw and make live in my process. And here I'm just kind of now forming out more of that shape. And I'm realizing that I need a reference. <laughs> so I added my cat. That's Blue, my cat. I put him in a box for you and took a photo. So after I've kind of like laid out all of my shapes from my drawing, I got a little more into placing the head, the bats, and just the general where everything is and prepping a little bit for bake at the same time. I hadn't really gotten into the sculpting yet for the pumpkins, so that's what we're going to end up doing next. Here I'm just kind of doing more quad draw make live with the face on. And then we're coming into ZBrush to do some sculpting on the pumpkin and the cat face. Um, I did skip sculpting one of the pumpkins, as there's three. Uh, the video ended up being really long, so I cut back on one, but the process is the same. I go through and like kind of back and forth between Maya and ZBrush a lot, deciding on where things are. Um, so from here I used a lot of the clay buildup brush and the trim dynamic brush and a little bit of damp standard, not too much. I didn't want the pinching to be very strong. Uh, the other thing I can do with the stems is use the snake hook tool and Dynamesh to get something. Um, so you could either do that or you could do it in Maya like I did earlier. I'm just kind of trying to find a shape that I like based on the reference and just, I don't know, my fantasy brain. More using the clay buildup, trim dynamic, and damn standard. And I'm not really looking for anything very specific, I'm just kind of getting the general idea. I didn't want to get too detailed with this. So what you saw earlier was me putting the hat uh, horizontally so that way I could use uh, radial symmetry in ZBrush. So here I've masked out a couple places to pull out some hair. And I just kind of made it really simple. I didn't want to get too crazy with it. Um, a little bit more pinching with damn standard. And then immediately brought that into Maya to do a retopology for the low resolution mesh. So the first thing I had was a base mesh, brought that in, sculpted on that, and then now I'm doing the low res mesh, which I'm going to use for the final bake. I probably could have used the same mesh earlier, but I actually combined the eyes and the nose into one mesh here and was trying to save some polygons, so I kind of put them all together instead of having the three separate parts. I think it ended up really well. I think uh, I could have been a little bit faster with this topology. I get kind of indecisive. So here I'm cleaning up the Dynamesh topology, or the uh, Z Remesh topology in Maya, or the hat. That's what I've been calling it, a hat. Uh, and then I brought that into ZBrush to get a low res of the stem. 
And then I just cleaned up the topology for that too. Just kind of trying to keep everything decently low res. There's a script that you can use to click uh, every other edge loop and delete them. So unfortunately in this I did have to skip a lot of the baking process. I use Marmoset to bake. I can show you all that in a later video. So I'm setting everything up, doing some UVs. Um, I do a lot of straight UVs with the Unify tool. Again, I had to cut back some here so I had some room to do some texture for you. So this is me just laying out. Um, usually I use uh, one of the auto layouts that Maya has, but because I ended up using Maya LT for this, um, it didn't really have that tool available. Also halfway through my process, I ended up changing from Maya LT to regular Maya. Apparently they're the same price if you get the Indie license. Because Maya LT actually ended up moving a lot of my UVs when I reopened the program at one point. And it was not helpful. It wasn't too many that it was like super annoying, but it scared me that if like I ever needed to open it again and they were ever to implode, <laughs> it would not be a good thing. So here I'm plugging in all the textures really quickly to give you an idea of where I went with the texture. And I baked all those in Marmoset, and again, like I said, I can show you that in a later video. So one of the cool things that I really liked here is I actually used one of their leaf tools. I could just like the texture and I liked the leaves, so I used that as kind of like my inspiration for the colors, as well as using uh, 3DX's hand-painted smart material. Uh, and if you're looking for that, you can find that probably in a link below. Uh, and I'm just kind of trying to find how to get the opacity to work. Um, sometimes I just revert to Photoshop to just make my own mask really quickly and combine them so that I don't have to like try and figure out all my layers. I just kind of like having the ease of one texture to use. So now I'm going through and color selecting based on a uh, material ID map that I made in Marmoset. I assigned a bunch of IDs to the high poly earlier. And just kind of selecting, uh, you know, what I want to be wood, what I want to look kind of plasticky or uh, fabricy. Um, I didn't get again too detailed with like things like roughness or specular. I just mostly focused a lot on just hand painting colors. Uh, it's my favorite thing to do. When I was growing up, my grandmother used to take me to paint ceramics. And so that's where a lot of my passion comes from for painting, because it's like doing that in real life, but digital. And, you know, undo is great. So now I'm doing a bit more of the emissive. I'm trying to do some like fall off pieces. And if you notice, the layout that we have right now is everything is kind of separated on the mesh so that way I can see everything a little better. And then later I'll combine it back into that placement that we made at the beginning of the video. So I'm kind of experimenting, trying to figure out what I want that to look like. And then uh, I came into Maya and placed everything. So I had a texture. It wasn't quite done yet, but done enough that like I could see it and I wanted to just replace the old placement placement meshes with my new UV meshes. Um, and in here I decided I wanted the candles to float. So if I were to ever animate it, I could like kind of make them hover. So it's like a spooky looking hovering light. So that was pretty cool. I aligned the pivot to the bottom uh, and then just kind of aligned it to the other shape and kind of moved things into place and scaled them how I liked. So those placement leaves are going to get replaced with the texture that I captured from a photo that I took from outside. 
And I scanned that in and brought that into Maya this way. Uh, and then I think I even sculpted a little bit of like some veins on there to make those pop a little more too. So this was like my first video I've ever done for a process workflow. So I apologize if it's like broken. I promise I'll do better in future videos. But I really wanted to get this out for Halloween. <laughs> so even though it's a belated Halloween, it's still here and he's still cute and I hope you are able to glean some new information. So again, I had like <clears throat> some loss of video, but I didn't do much here. I just added a couple stars with a height map and then changed the color of his fur. So now I'm just kind of adding details to his face. I added the little whisker nodules. And then I didn't really like the eyes that I had, so I took those off and I'm doing those over. Also so that you can see kind of like what I'm doing. I turned down symmetry. I'm trying to figure out what kind of iris I want. I really like using the shape circle squeeze alpha a lot in my work because I can change the size of it kind of on the fly. And then here I just kind of did like a really faint iris fanning of a uh, different color for the color of the eye. Just kind of experimenting a little. So then I get into the color of the ear and I just wanted it to match the nose. Um, I know cats in real life don't necessarily have super duper pink ears, but when I look at blue, that's all I see. So I just wanted more pink. <laughs> I think pink and gray is like a really friendly color set to put together against the very bright orange that we have everywhere else. And so here I'm using a thickness map. I uh, used it for both the highlights of his face and also for the lowlights of his face. And I guess it's not really highlights or lowlights as much as it is, it is uh, trying to place where I'd want a hinting of stripes. So kind of like Bob Ross, where it's like just kind of an idea. It doesn't necessarily need to be anything exact. It's just something to kind of show that there's striping or something there. And I really love using thickness maps. I think they're very helpful for getting more depth in your hand-painted asset. So I tried like adding a couple more stripes here. Uh, on the ears, going back and forth between the layers of like the light and dark. And then I even tried uh, adding a little more on the side of the face, but I didn't like them, so I took them off. And then a couple more like final touches. I added metalness to the swirlies just because I wanted them to be shiny. And then I added some swirlies to the candles. And then this is the final bacon marmoset. I hope you really enjoyed this video and I look forward to sharing more with you. Happy belated Halloween. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.